in addition to the camera settings, another thing that you can do is adjust the laser power. And the way you adjust it is with this window here. So uh, these unfortunately don't have the names of the lasers, but they're ordered from lower to higher wavelengths. And so the first one is the laser for DAPI. The second one is the laser for Fitzy. The third one is for the Texas Red, and the last one is for the Psi 5. So since we're looking at the Texas Red, one way of improving the quality of this image is increasing the laser power. So let me show you an example of this. So if I go to an exposure of 100 and take an image, if I now uh, increase this to from 25 to 100 and I take another image, you can see that the quality is higher. Now, unfortunately, these numbers, even though they're expressed as a percent, don't correspond perfectly to an, uh, sort of a percent of laser illumination hitting the sample. Rather, um, they follow the relationships shown here. Uh, so this is a curve that will be pasted on the wall of this room and it shows the relative power the actual power at the sample for four different lasers um, relative to their maximum as a function of the software setting. So whatever you set this number to be, you can go in through the x-axis of this uh, curve and decide um, and see, excuse me, what the relative power is going to be at the sample. So you can see that we started at 25% with the 561 laser, so roughly there at 0.3. Um, and then when we went to 100, we actually were not at the maximum. The maximum is at 70. So let's set that to 70. And by doing that, we would have expected the signal to go up about threefold. So if we take an image, the idea is that this at 70 is going to be equivalent to three times as much exposure with this at 25. So uh, in absolute terms, note that these lasers are um, not very strong. So you can go to 100% and really not uh, necessarily bleach the sample, but the proof is in the pudding. So if you're going to look at uh, live cells, what you need to check is that whatever laser power you're using is not going to photo damage them. Um, so they should be viable at the end of the experiment and that it's not going to bleach uh, the, the fluorophores that you're using to track whatever biological parameter it is that you are interested in. So figuring out um, what laser power is tolerable uh, takes a little bit of trial and error. That said, uh, there's a basic rule, which is that if you use high laser power and low exposure, you can go faster, but that will be slightly more damaging than using an equivalent uh, amount of light, but distributed with lower laser power and longer exposure. And how to kind of navigate those constraints to try and get um, an optimal uh, requires some testing, and I'm happy to discuss with you. So uh, in this case, let's, for example, set this at 50% and set this to a one second exposure. And here we get a sort of high quality image.